Hi, I'm Kondik Dev, a senior software engineer with only a decade of experience, but a lifelong passion for Linux. Today I'm going to elevate your ordinary laptop to a Linux-based development powerhouse. First off, why use Linux for software development and productivity? And the answer is simple. If you deal with software, you will eventually have to get familiar with Linux. And unless you have a laser-like focus on user interface and user experience, Linux will be all over your face. And the other reasons are forever free and open source. You will almost always want to host your servers on Linux because it's free. Cloud hosting providers like Amazon and Google offer the best possible prices on Linux machines. And if you want to self-host, you are in the hands of Linux again. Do you want to use Docker or Kubernetes? Linux, here I come. And if you're an ordinary user that doesn't engage in development activities, but does other productivity stuff and need Adobe Suite for those purposes, you have free alternatives like GIMP for photo editing, Inkscape for vector graphics, DaVinci Resolve for video editing, which probably already is the best video editing software in existence, and Blender for visual effects and animations. These apps are all Linux natives, not to mention the fact that free software like Blender are becoming the industry standard anyway. Now, the counter arguments for using Linux as your productivity machine are iOS development. iOS development requires a Mac. You can use a virtual machine for it, but if you don't want to be bothered, you'll have to use a Mac. Or you really cannot live without Adobe Suite or Autodesk products like AutoCAD. If you like gaming, obviously you will need a Windows machine. Or maybe you are a UI UX developer that needs a Mac more than Air. While at it, let us consider two leading contenders to Linux. First, Mac. Mac OS is the sweet spot between a Unix and a Windows. It has pretty good app compatibility while still being a Unix platform. You get the benefit of both worlds, but it cannot be installed on non-Apple hardware without major headache, and it is forever expensive. And good old Windows. It has legendary backwards compatibility when it comes to apps, and pretty much any app will work on Windows, exception being the Unix utilities like Bash and other command line apps. Now, what do I use? I personally use a Mac and the Linux, about 50-50. I use my Mac for work and use my Linux machine for my web apps. So when my productive hits the bottom on my Mac, I switch to my Linux, it's like a fresh bread of air. It may or may not work for you, but it works for me really well. No matter what you prefer, I would recommend first installing Linux in a virtual machine using a virtual box, using VMware or QEMU as you like. At the end of the day, it is free, including all the apps that you'll ever need. If you have a spare computer to play with, see the links in the description below to learn how to prepare a virtual machine or a USB stick to install Linux on a real machine. I want to continue by mentioning the package managers. You should use an operating system with a good package manager. Why? Because you will use a lot of productivity apps and you want to stick to specific versions of those apps during your projects. To be able to do that, you either have to use a dumb operating system with no proper package manager, so you manage all the versions of everything yourself, or use an OS with a proper package manager that handles all of this for you. In my experience, Arch Linux and derivatives, especially Manjaro, is the best of the best package managers. You can find any package and their versions in the main package repositories, or alternatively, in the user-submitted package repos. Obviously, non-Linux OSs have some package manager options too, so let's mention them. Let's start with Mac. Mac OS has Homebrew Package Manager, which is pretty good actually. It has pretty much all the packages, but when it comes to versioning, it fails hard. For instance, I use long-term support versions of Unity Editor, but I cannot find it in Homebrew packages. But I should mention that Homebrew is getting better and better. And Windows. The chocolate package manager of Windows has pretty much all of the common apps, but it is missing a lot of stuff too. It also has bare minimum versioning support. But I should also mention that it is also getting better. Now investigate Manjaro Linux a little bit. Why do I recommend it? As I said, it is the best possible package manager. Not to mention the fact that 
it is based on Arch Linux, which means you get access to all the Arch packages and the awesome Arch wikis. I personally recommend using XFCE desktop environment. The default Manjaro installer has a nice graphical UI and it installs all the default apps for you. That will give you a ready to use development and productive day environment. Also, XFCE is the most stable desktop environment in my opinion, even more so than GNOME and KDE. As you get more and more senior, you can completely switch to Arch Linux and use i3, which would give you a bare bones Linux experience. But that is for Linux experts to play with. Hardware setup. When it comes to hardware, Linux works with pretty much everything. However, I would recommend using a Lenovo T-Series laptop. As you know, Lenovo is the XIBM. I personally favor a minimal environment using a laptop with a simple mouse and a headphone and nothing else. I would advise a laptop or a desktop because it's quite liberating. Being mobile helps you maintain your productivity. You can change your environment anytime you are bored. You can move your entire office to a coffee shop, to a meeting, to a presentation, to a meetup, just about anywhere. Now let's have a look at the operating system installation. I will start by booting my virtual machine with the Manjaro ISO Connect. It will boot to a ready-to-use live environment. You can explore around before installing. If the text is too small, go to Start, Configuration, Display, and set a more appropriate resolution. You can mess with the high DPI settings later. Continue by clicking Install on the welcome screen. Enable full disk encryption if you will have sensitive information on your computer or just in case it gets stolen or lost. However, full disk encryption is generally problematic on Linux in my experience. It might break in the future, especially after a major upgrade, so beware. Most of the time though, it will be a fixable issue. The graphical installer used by Manjaro is called Calamares and it is pretty much the industry standard for installing Linux. Follow the instructions to select the time zone, language, office suite, etc. and wait for the installer to finish. If you are not sure what to choose, Google around first so you will make conscious choices. After the reboot, you will be ready for action. Now it is time to install all the packages necessary to turn this machine into a productivity powerhouse. Manjaro is bundled with Pacman, which is the default package manager in Arch Linux. You can also use the graphical package manager, which I will do in this video. Let us go ahead and apply the updates before starting to install apps. You do not need to restart your computer unless the kernel was updated. Also, you need to go to the settings and enable AUR, Arch User Repository, to be able to get the user or company submitted packages. After that, we will install Node.js, Go, and Python as our primary programming language runtimes. Visual Studio Code is our code editor. On a side note, IntelliJ is even better, but it is paid, though it is free for students and open source projects. VirtualBox, in case we need to use Windows or macOS for testing or building stuff. GIMP for photo editing. Inkscape for vector graphics. DaVinci Resolve for video editing, which is probably the best video editor, Blender for animations and visual effects, Chrome, just in case we want to test our web apps on Chrome, Firefox is there by default anyway, Dropbox to save personal files and config backups, optionally Steam for games, again optionally Android Studio for Android development, and finally Unity Editor with Android and WebGL packages, in case we want to develop mobile and web games. The package manager will ask you to select the optional dependencies. Do not forget to select NPM for Node.js. You will be asked to select the VirtualBox modules matching your kernel version. You can check the Manjaro Configuration Manager tool on the taskbar to learn about the currently installed kernel version. The rest of what you will need will already be pre-installed. So wait for the installation to finish and we will start being productive. Software development. In this part, I'm gonna quickly create a React app using create React app 
CLI tool. We will simply use the terminal and Visual Studio Code to edit our project and create a basic Manjaro Hello website. On the Start menu, we have shortcuts for the terminal and the default browser, which is Firefox in our case. I'll start by Googling Create React App CLI tool from the React team. So I'm going to initialize my first project and pop open my code editor. With the npm start command, I'm going to start the project and it's going to open a new tab in Firefox. And there we go, our first React app on our brand new Manjaro development environment. Let's go ahead and modify this so we can make it into a Hello World or Hello Manjaro website. I'm going to go ahead and download a Manjaro logo and replace the default React logo with the Manjaro one. And there we go. Our logo is in place. Let's go ahead and edit the text. So it's going to be a warm welcome to Manjaro. We can continue to edit this project, make it into something more relevant. But for now, I'm going to switch to regular productivity apps. Not everybody is a developer, so let's check out some office style of editing. I'm going to start by creating a 3D cube in Inkscape as a vector graphic. I'm going to save it. And now I'm going to open GIMP and import that vector graphics and add some text on top of it and I'm going to export it as a PNG file. Now I'm going to pop open LibreOffice Writer and I'm going to import our freshly created image and add some title to it. After it is done, I'm going to print our doc as a PDF so I can put it into our Dropbox. I'm going to first start by logging into our Dropbox account and then just drag and drop our PDF file to our Dropbox directory. And it's going to be uploaded to our Dropbox pretty fast. Now I can just open it in our browser or share it with other people. And that's it. That's how we get to be productive on our brand new Manjaro productivity machine. Now you are all ready to be productive. Go ahead and do something great. If you need help, Arch and Manjaro wikis offer exceptionally good help. And if you need to ask a personal question, go ahead and check out their forums, which is full of great and up-to-date answers. However, most of the time, you won't even need that. You can simply Google your problem, and most of the solutions but they apply to Arch Linux and Manjaro also. And that is it for this video. If you like technical guides like this, give the video a thumbs up so I'll do more. If you like the content, sub to this channel so you'll get more of this goodness. And see you next time. Peace.